It's after nine o'clock by the time Peanut gets home. You can't keep running off, Jessie insists. You're a child. She is still in her muslin skirt and high-necked shirt from work, a streak of red mud across her forehead. Peanut's good mood evaporates. I need to do everything I can not to turn into an adult like you, she thinks. Where is Libby? she asks. Is she writing? No, she went somewhere with that reporter. Peanut looks at Jessie in disbelief. She what? Why'd you let her go? Jessie throws up her hands. Apparently, she doesn't listen to me either. Peanut finds her father in their garage, his head and torso hidden under the hood of an old black truck. When Vast Robbins, who owned the only auto shop in town, died of emphysema last year, he left his 1944 Jeep to Peanut's father. He's been trying to get it to run ever since. But like he always tells people who ask how it's coming, he's no Vast Robbins. Libby shouldn't be with that reporter, Peanut says instead of hello. She should be at home. Her father stands and stretches. I agree. Libby has some serious health issues that need attention. Getting her home is a wise idea. Can I drive your truck to go get her? Peanut asks eagerly, already looking around for the keys. I know how. First you put in the clutch, then you... I mean, her father says, we should get Libby back to her home. But she likes it here. Peanut drops her hands off the invisible steering wheel. She's always saying how pretty Blue Skies is, and she'd never had Morios before. Peanut points to Buzz's house next door. She even laughs at Buzz's jokes, and he's not funny at all. However, she's not writing, and isn't that what she came for? Her ideas are gestating, Peanut says stubbornly. They're in her mind, like a little baby, not ready to be born yet. If you believe that, I have some real estate next to the cross-county waste station to sell you. Peanut runs her finger over the door jam. It looks like a face, big nose, tiny eyes. She wonders if it minds being in the dark most of the time. She won't close the door all the way when she leaves. Nancy's friends with me again, she announces. When wasn't she? Yesterday and the day before, for a small but tremendous eternity, didn't Jessie tell you? I think we've established that Jessie rarely tells me anything. Her father bends over the open hood again. I hate Jessie, Peanut offers. I wish her soul was trapped in a slimy old doll that no one ever wanted to play with. One that's left outside during the coldest snow apocalypse, buried enough, Peanut. She doesn't tell the truth and doesn't have any friends and doesn't read or respect the children and never even puts the cat back on the toothpaste. So then it, I said, that's enough, 